Hi everyone, welcome to another Python QGIS tutorial. Um, I apologize that it's been a while since I've been doing any uh, QGIS tutorials. I've been uh, working on some data science things lately, but I'm glad to get back to some QGIS. Um, before we get started, I just want to mention that I've recently launched a Python QGIS course on my website, opensourceoptions.com. Um, and I'll link to that above in the card so you can go take a look at that. And that will uh, cover more than the, the tutorials on the YouTube channel cover, and it will provide data and code that you can use to, uh, that you can have as part of the course. So you'll have all the data that I use, and you'll have all the code that I use available to you when you sign up for that course. So go to opensourceoptions.com forward slash courses and take a look at that. Um, and if you want a discount on courses, if you sign up for the email list on opensourceoptions.com, um, you'll get sent discounts periodically. So today we're going to create a processing plugin. And let me show you what I mean by that. If we go to the processing toolbox here, you can see we pull the toolbox up on this side. And down here it has this script. And here's an example script. And you can see I have this example one, which is an OSO algorithm, which actually doesn't do anything. But if I double click on this, you can see it opens it up. It gives me a place to have input parameters and output layers. And so I can select this stuff. I can change some settings. Um, and I can run tools or algorithms right from the processing toolbox. So I'm going to show you today how you can set that up. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And the first thing you do is just come up and click on this Python button right here. Click on that drop down. Click on create new script. And there you have it. Um, we can start writing things in here. And so you can go check out the documentation for this and figure out exactly the class structure you need to make, but I'd recommend an easier way. Just go to the same button and just do a new script from template. And that's going to pull this template up here. And it gives you all the imports that you're going to need, and it gives you this class name, which is example processing algorithm. Okay, so this is going to be your processing algorithm right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all this the same. We're just going to take a quick look down through here to see what these things are, and then we'll change just a few things um, in order to make it somewhat custom. We're not going to do a whole lot of actual algorithm processing here. I'm more going to show you what you need to change to make this work for you. Okay, let's just stop at the top of this um, Python script and go through things really quick. So we have our imports here. We have the name of the class, which is, which is example processing algorithm. Um, and it's a subclass of the QGS processing algorithm. Um, you don't need to change anything here. Okay, we have the input and the output here. Um, pretty simple. So these are going to be used when calling the algorithm from another algorithm. You have the translatable string, you create an instance of your class, you have the name. Um, oh, one thing I'll mention too is that when you create processing scripts, you can use those in the graphical modeler or the model builder. Okay, so you have the display name, the group that it's in, um, the group ID, so you can create new groups, things like that. You have a short help string. Um, here's where you initialize the algorithm. Okay, and so this is just going to get the parameters or add the parameters. So we can do self.input, input layer. Okay, um, and you'll notice here that we did, we did add parameter and then we added a parameter feature source. We added it to input, we gave it the name input layer, and then we gave it a type. Okay, and so let's just try to add another parameter here. And let's do uh, self dot add parameter. So we want a QGS processing parameter feature source. And we're going to put it in input. It's going to be an input. And we'll call this. Um, second layer and then let's give it the list so we need to have this in a list which will be QGS processing 
type vector, and we can make this just be required be required to be a point. Let's make this a point geometry. Okay, and then we need to close our parentheses, and we should have a second parameter there. So let's go ahead here and click save on this script. And notice it put me in the default processing scripts folder, which is where I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save this as like YouTube algorithm. So let's click save. And I'm going to go ahead and close this now and let's open it up with our scripts. And this one's my script. I didn't change the name of it. And let's see what we have here. So we have our input layer. I don't have any layers, so it didn't add it in there. And it didn't create a new um, a new input. Let's see if we can go ahead and figure out how to get that as a new input real quick. So we can right click on our script here and we can edit the script. Okay, let's find out where we can change this. All right, and so what we need to do is we've assigned two things to this input here. Let's just go ahead and make a new one. We'll call it input point. PT equals input PT. Okay, and now let's go down to where we assigned the parameter, which is in init algorithm. Where we have self input, let's change this to self input PT, and let's change this to point layer. Okay, now let's go ahead and save this and we'll come over we'll go to scripts example scripts my script and now you can see that we have our point layer here and we can drop down and select things okay i'm going to go ahead uh, and close this out and i'm going to add in a couple of vector layers um, so that we can see what happens it'll take me just a sec to find a couple so hold hold tight okay so i have a couple of layers added in let's just go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like in my script now so I'm going to open my script up, and you can see that it gives me Idaho cities. Idaho cities automatically populated. When I click this one, I can also select the U.S. states. If I do this one, I can only select Idaho cities because I specified the vector geometry to be points only. Okay. So you can see there that we now have some data added in. Let's go back and edit our script um, some more here. Sorry, this is just barely off my screen, so you might not be able to see it when I click Edit Script. All right. So we've gone down. We have initiated the algorithm by adding our parameters. The output parameter is added here. Added here. Okay. And now we want to process our algorithm. And so that means we're going to do something with the inputs. And the first thing that happens is it's going to check... Uh, the source inputs, and then in this case, this is the source. This is the first. This is the first layer that we've selected. Okay, um, and if it's if it's none, it's going to raise an exception uh, and stop things there. Otherwise, it's going to go through and it's going to set up this feature sync, um, which is where the output is going to be stored. Um, and we set up those things here. And as you can see, that's automatically set up. Uh, and then we can send feedback to the user, which there's an example of that here. Once again, uh, we can set an, ex an exemption, an exception, and then go through all the features. We can add a feature, we can show the progress, okay, and then we can do things like buffer. And so if you guys are interested uh, in doing something like this where you use a processing algorithm inside of your script, Check out my other QG, PyQGIS video um, that shows you how to do this. Okay, and then you can return the output and the destination, the destination ID of the output. Okay, so that just kind of walks you through what they've done here. Um, let's see if we can do something a little bit custom in this process algorithm section. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and just try to run this script and see what happens. I'm going to open this script up. I'm going to have my first. I'm going to just keep these both as Idaho cities. Um, I'm going to create a temporary output layer and I'm just going to click run and let's see what happens. Okay, so it says my script is finished. Um, do I have any layers? Okay, so I got an output layer added here. 
Let's close this script and close that. Turn this off. And you can see it just put those features right back out. It didn't do anything special. It just put those right back out. Okay. So let's remove that. Okay. And now let's open our script back up. Sorry, edit our script, not open it. And let's go back down to where the processing happens. Okay. So let's do something where we change the symbology of our second layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. So down here, um, let's come down here after we've push feedback to the user and let's make uh, we'll call this point layer PT underscore LYR and this is going to be so here we did self dot parameter source let's do self dot parameter as layer and do it as vector layer maybe as a vector layer. We want to do a similar thing where here we uh, input the parameters. We want to get self.input underscore PT and we'll give it the context. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter and tab and enter and then we'll go up and remember we want the parameters self.input2 or input point context. So parameters self dot sorry my computer froze hopefully everything's all right self dot input underscore pt comma enter and context okay so let's go take a look up here and see if we've done this the same way as we have already okay and now just take a look if you want to bring parameters or context come from these are passed in to process algorithms, so it presses in the parameters, the context, and the feedback. And so we've just called those here, and we now have this point layer as a vector layer. And now that we have this point layer, we should be able to change its symbology. All right, so let's go ahead, and now that we've input this parameter, let's go ahead and change its symbology. Um, now, if you're interested in how to change symbology for all these different layer types, you can check out the course once again. I also have some YouTube videos on this, but I'll show you how to do this for a point layer right now. Let's make a new variable called point symbol. And this is going to be a QGS marker symbol. So a marker is just like your point feature, a point geometry. And so we're going to do create simple. And here we're going to pass the dictionary that contains uh, all the settings you want to pass. In this case, we're just going to pass it a, a different shape and we'll make it a diamond. Okay, so instead of being a circle, this should come out as a diamond now. And then what we want to do is do point layer dot renderer. And then we want to set the symbol as our point symbol. And then we want to do layer dot trigger repaint. Okay. And so when this runs, it should trigger a repaint on that layer and we should get diamonds to show up. So let's save our script and let's close it. Let's come down and run it and see if this works like we expect it to. So my script, um, I'm going to change the input to this one to be the state and see if we still get that to work. We'll keep this as a temporary output layer. In our Idaho cities, this should change to a diamond. Let's go ahead and click Run. And we have a problem. It says QGS marker symbol is not defined. So let's go see if I can figure out what I've done incorrectly there. So let's close this. Let's edit our script again. We'll go down to that line. which is right here and let me see if I can figure out my problem. Okay, so I think the problem might be that we haven't imported 
uh, this symbology. So if we import QGS symbol, that will hopefully get it for us. So let's put a comma here, hit enter, and type QGS symbol, and hit enter. And if we add that, hopefully that gives us what we need. Let's save that script. Let's come back down. Let's go to scripts, uh, example scripts, my script. We'll change this one to the polygon again. And let's go ahead and click run. And we still have a problem with QGS marker symbol. Oh, and I might know what the problem is here. That might still be an import problem. Um, so let's go back and edit our script. Come back down to our length of believable around 160. So here we are. Let's try it. Let me just test something. So if we do QGS symbol dot QGS marker symbols. But let me just do a put QGS symbol in front of that. Um, since we imported QGS symbol dot QGS marker symbol. Let's see if we can click run here. So we'll save that. Let's see if we can click run. There we go. Um, change this back to the states. Let's click run. And we still have a problem. Okay. All right. I figured out the problem. We need to change this to QGS marker symbol. So not QGS symbol. We actually need to call QGS marker symbol here in the imports. And then... Let me come down, and we have one more problem down here, and that's this should be PT underscore layer, not just layer. Um, you may have caught that when I first typed it. Obviously, I didn't. And now, let's save the script. And we can click Run straight from the script editor. When it pulls it up. We'll change this one. Let's click Run. Okay. Now, let's go take a look and see if this worked. The script ran, which is good, so let's just close these things out. I'm going to turn off my output layer, and you can see my Idaho cities are now diamonds. Um, so that worked. Um, it didn't change the symbology here in the table of contents, and that's okay. But we did tell it to change in the map, and that worked. So there's just an example to get you started with creating processing scripts in QGIS. Um, like I said, if you want to know more about the specifics of how to uh, alter geometries and work with different layers, go ahead and check out the full course. Um, and sign up for, uh, for the newsletter if you're interested in receiving discounts for those courses. Thanks for watching, guys. Sorry we ran into some errors, but that's the way it goes. I like to show you that because it's part of programming. Um, debugging always takes much more time than conceptualizing the code. Um, so thanks for watching. More GIS and Python GIS stuff coming in the future. Thanks.